Uh, Excellencies, uh, dear colleagues, uh, welcome uh, to this uh, side event um, at the uh, High Level Political Forum uh, on a role for cities and regions to leave uh, no one behind, integrating a local and a national uh, reviews. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Robin Ogilvie and I'm the Special Representative and Permanent Observer uh, of the OECD uh, here at uh, UN headquarters uh, in New York. Let me begin um, uh, on behalf of uh, the OECD and our co-hosts um, by conveying uh, my condolences to uh, all of those who have been affected uh, by the, the COVID-19 crisis. This is a crisis that um, is uh, apparent uh, everywhere, um, but is felt first and foremost in our communities, in our cities uh, and in our regions. Uh, and that's precisely why, uh, as the crisis unfolded, uh, we decided with our partners on screen today uh, to host today's uh, event. Uh, why? Because it's important that in the midst of this crisis, we don't lose sight of the 2030 agenda. We don't lose sight of the SDGs uh, as a framework um, uh, for recovering uh, from uh, the current crisis. Uh, the aim of this event, very briefly, uh, is to look at how we link the various SDG uh, processes, actions, uh, and reviews. Many of you have been involved um, in the voluntary national reviews of the Sustainable Development Goals that have been ongoing uh, in recent days. Uh, the OECD estimates that, uh, estimates that uh, at least 105 of the 169 SDG targets won't be met uh, without a proper engagement and coordination with local and regional governments. We've also seen great examples of cities developing uh, voluntary local reviews to assess progress uh, on the SDGs, uh, and some of them are with us uh, and we'll talk about their work uh, today. Second, we've heard that while uh, national governments uh, uh, are engaging in this global process through the VNRs, cities and regions are not systematically uh, engaged in this. Uh, and third, I think there's a huge potential to use the SDGs as a tool to improve a multi-level governance. Uh, and again, we'll have uh, examples uh, on today's panel uh, of countries, uh, of regions, uh, of cities, uh, in which we're seeing uh, steps being taken to promote this in very concrete terms. Uh, our panel includes, uh, in addition to um, our senior experts from Paris at the OECD, who will present uh, their work on territorial approach to the SDGs, uh, includes also two national governments that are active uh, in supporting the localization of the SDGs, uh, two cities uh, that have developed voluntary local reviews, the Brazilian state of Piranha that's using the SDGs uh, as a policy making tool, uh, as well as the uh, European Union which has launched a program uh, to promote city to city partnerships uh, around the world. So Excellencies, uh, dear colleagues, um, that's enough from me. Uh, I will say that today's event is co-hosted uh, here in New York uh, by the permanent mission of Germany to the United Nations. And we're very, very grateful to Germany uh, for its close partnership uh, at the OECD on a whole range of issues, uh, including uh, the work on a subnational uh, approach to the SDGs. Germany, one of uh, many uh, partners and uh, contributors financially and otherwise uh, to this important body of work. Uh, at the OECD, and I'd like to turn the floor briefly uh, before we get underway to uh, Ms. Karen Goebel, who is a minister at the Permanent Mission of Germany uh, to the UN. But Karen, you have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Robin. Uh, Germany is very happy to co host today's uh, event together with the OECD. Uh, as uh, Robin mentioned, implementing the SDGs not only on the national but also on the regional and local levels is crucial to reaching the ambitious goals of the 2030 Agenda. The OECD's uh, program is very much in line with Germany's approach uh, to support our partner countries in implementing and reviewing the 2030 Agenda in their specific uh, national contexts, focusing especially on the local level. To establish good review mechanisms, uh, we need strong partnerships at and between uh, the international, national and local levels and today's uh, event is uh, an excellent example for this, uh, so I'm very much looking forward to the 
discussions with our distinguished panelists and I welcome our audience from all over the world. Uh, back to you, Robin. Karen, thank you uh, for those warm words of welcome and thank you again for uh, co-hosting this uh, with us. Um, I'm now going to introduce each of our distinguished panelists in turn. Uh, and after that, I very much hope that we'll have time uh, for comments and questions from the floor. Um, I'm conscious that we have uh, well over 100 uh, attendees in our uh, virtual room right now and more are still joining as uh, other meetings uh, wrap up. Um, if you would like to intervene after our distinguished panelists, uh, I would ask that you press the raise hand button. For those of you uh, who don't have a raise a hand button on your device, uh, please use the uh, chat box. Uh, the technical team will then invite you onto the panelist screen uh, and unmute you. Uh, so that will be after the uh, initial uh, interventions uh, by our panelists. So without further ado, it's my a great honor and privilege uh, to invite our first speaker today, uh, Ambassador Agustin Santos Maravel, who is a permanent representative uh, of Spain to the United Nations. Uh, Spain has many responsibilities uh, this year, uh, and one of them is uh, the presidency of the OECD. Uh, Ambassador, we're very grateful for your government's leadership uh, at the OECD um, uh, in this uh, very challenging uh, time. Spain is also a country that's been very active uh, in localizing uh, the SDGs. Um, uh, our colleagues in Paris uh, are, are in active uh, contact with uh, cities and regions in Spain uh, on their work. Your government also hosted uh, last year uh, a meeting, a high level meeting on the localization uh, of the SDGs, uh, which gave rise to the Seville commitment uh, on localizing the SDGs. So Ambassador uh, Santos, it's a huge pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Robin, for your kind and probably undeserved words. And thank you very much to the German mission and our colleagues of the OCD for organizing this side event. Let me start with a figure. 65% of the targets of the SDGs and the 2030 agenda depend directly on the service provided by local and regional governments. If we don't have a cultural transformation that reinforces the capacity, the financial possibilities, and the uh, training of local and regional governance, we'll not be able to fulfill the objectives of this decade of action, which is essential for the implementation of the 2030 agenda. And this 65% was before the COVID-19 crisis. Now we know that local and regional governments have been at the front line of the fight against COVID-19. Many of our welfare state depends on the services provided by these local and regional governments, transportation, education, housing, all these public common goods depend in many ways of how they are implemented, how they are planned and how they are delivered by local and regional governments. It is essential to provide these services and it's essential to put local and regional governments at the core action of the Agenda 2030. Spain organized in February 2019, along with uh, Cape Verde and Ecuador, a seminar in Seville, the high level event on the localization of the SDGs. And the Seville commitment approved a, a program in five points that I'm going to summarize for you. First, it's essential to localize the SDGs to implement the 2030 agenda. Second, we need a multi-level and multi-stakeholder process. Municipalities, regional governments depend in many social actors, many cooperatives, many different citizens associations. And we need to plan all this action, put it together in a cohesive plan and link it to our national level planning uh, for the implementation of the agenda. Third, we need to mobilize resources. We need to train local and regional governments. They need to be able to fulfill their responsibilities. Fourth, we need national policies to promote territorial and rural and urban cohesion and sustainable cities and rural areas. We cannot maintain the division between rural and, uh, rural and urban areas that we have inherited from the past. 
and the faith and lives and last objective we need to strengthen a global movement not only for supporting the agenda 2030 but also to putting at the core of that agenda the localization of the sdgs in the case of spain let me explain you that because of historical reasons but also because of the democratic choice of our constitution in 1978 we are a very decentralized country we have 17 autonomous communities regional governments two autonomous cities and over one uh, sorry 8000 municipalities this is a very rich uh, texture is a very rich framework on which we have to work and provide all that depends mainly uh, what we call the welfare state and we need this powerful entry these capacities to apply the agenda 2030 at all levels looking into the future well obviously as we have said we need to support the local 2030 agenda we need to have local and regional governments that prepare and plan with the agenda 2030 their future and we need a catalytic emerging movement to extend this process beyond Spain, beyond the European Union, worldwide, to uh, make it possible and to um, see the agenda become a citizen's issue, something that is very strongly based on civil society and at the same time, it is based on the local and regional action. Thinking about the COVID-19 and aftermath, we need long-term resilience of these regions with these cities. We cannot afford to have fiscal crisis at this level because it affects directly to the expenditure, the social expenditure, and to those elements of the welfare state which are essential now to overcome the COVID-19 crisis. The Agenda 2030 will continue to be our common roadmap. The civil, the civil commitments, the five points that I pointed out, are needed to make local and regional governments stronger and more able to provide what we need to implement the agenda. Thank you so much. Ambassador Santos, thank you for this uh, initial uh, intervention and thank you again for your leadership on this agenda. Um, we heard about resource mobilization. We heard about the need to uh, put skills and resources in the right place, put citizens at the center, promote inclusion. And you also mentioned uh, a very important point on um, the need for policies that are conducive to localization. Um, we are, uh, the, the slogan of the OECD is better policies for better lives. So this is a, a segue, I guess, uh, to our next uh, distinguished panelist, who is a good friend and close colleague of mine, uh, Aziza Akmush. She heads up our uh, city's urban policy and sustainable development uh, division at OECD headquarters uh, in Paris. Uh, I should mention that she's joined on screen, we'll see in a little uh, later uh, by Stefano Matta, who is uh, one of the, I would say, one of the lead brains uh, in her team on this agenda, but one of the lead analysts uh, uh, working uh, on these issues uh, at the OECD. Uh, Aziza, tell us a bit about your work. Thank you very much, Robin. And uh, while uh, Adam is uh, helping me with some of the slides that are meant to provide you with the link to our work and uh, some visuals, let me thank our colleagues from Germany for joining efforts and hosting that event together, but also for the great work we've been doing on localizing the SDGs together. Um, I share with you uh, three of the messages that have come out of the work we've been doing over the past two years on localizing the SDGs, which we believe that the local and national voluntary reviews that are being developed these days can very much help advance. The first message is that we need to accelerate the shift towards what we call a territorial approach to the sustainable development goals. If we go to uh, the next slide, this slide indeed, what you can see is that there's been in a number of cities and regions a very interesting transition from what was originally a top-down compliance agenda to a more bottom-up rethinking of the way we move, the way we consume, the way we produce, the way we plan, invest, and allocate budget, uh, and a, a rethinking of, of this from the ground up, from local and regional governments. And the good news, as I said, is that many cities and regions are already doing that. We worked with Flanders in Belgium, Cordoba in Argentina, Paraná in Brazil, who have all revisited their local and regional development plans 
based on the SDGs. Cities like Bonn in Germany or Kopavogur in Iceland, Kitakyushu in Japan, or even Southern Denmark and Viken as regions have all formulated new plans and strategies based on the SDGs. And cities like Moscow, for example, are using the SDGs to assess their sustainable development outcomes. The second message, if we go to the next slide, is showing that the role of multi-level governance that was very well emphasized is indeed uh, in particular to help better manage the trade-offs that are somehow inherent to the sustainable development goals and align policy priorities not only across levels of government and some countries have been doing this very well such as Japan or Germany uh, where we've been working on this multi-level governance but also across ministerial policies portfolios and city departments policies and portfolios and I'll give you one example if you are a mayor for example how do you manage the trade-off between the need for more green space which is called for under SDG 11 and in particular in this COVID-19 uh, era and the need for more housing supply which is called for under SDG 1 to uh, alleviate poverty when you know that land is limited and sometimes land use is restricted so the SDG and the checklist that you see on the screen that we developed at the OECD need to be thought in a systemic holistic framework to properly manage those trade-offs and make sure that decisions taken for one of the sustainable development goals do not work against the others. And that takes me to the third and last uh, message which is related to the data. What you see on the screen is a, a, a measurement framework that we have developed at the OECD to localize the sustainable development goals in cities and regions and help measure the distance of cities and regions for each of the goals beyond SDG 11 devoted to cities and communities where we believe they have very core competencies and some of these policies were uh, listed by the ambassador in his remarks. We very much believe and insist that if we don't push this statistical frontier and if we don't go more granular in this data production at local and regional level we will continue to do monitoring based on national average that we know is masking huge regional disparities and sometimes sending a somehow misleading picture of how countries are performing and I'll give you two examples that came out of the data we have produced for 600 regions and 600 cities in 40 OECD and partner countries the first one is that we have figured out that 80% of the regions have actually not achieved the end values for 2030 for any of the 17 sustainable development goals. We are talking about the most advanced and industrialized economies of the world where we are not on track at regional level. The second message that comes out is that the goals where we are lagging in particular much behind at local and regional level relate to SDG 13 on climate, SDG 5 on gender equality and we could see this during the COVID-19 lockdown you know the increase of domestic violence but also the limited share of female mayors for example globally and also SDG 7 on clean energy we know for example that only 20 percent of the cities that are generating electricity produce more than 80 percent of it out of renewable energy so with the proper combination of policy, data, and multi-level governance, we very much believe that this territorial approach to the sustainable development goals can help deliver these better lives uh, for people that uh, Robin was mentioning as OECD motto. Thank you very much for your attention. Aziza, thank you so much for this concise presentation. I, I'm gonna have, I have so many questions that we'll have to follow up uh, offline, you and I, but I'm, I just find it mind blowing that none of the regions you've studied have have met a single uh, sustainable development goal yet. And this serves as, I think, also a helpful reminder of the universal nature of this agenda. It's not just about developing countries. Uh, it's not just about the global south. This is an agenda that, that really is intended to bring everyone together uh, and address uh, shared challenges. Um, it gives me great pleasure to move on to our next panelist, uh, Guto Silva, who is a chief of staff in the executive office uh, of the governor of the state of Parana, Brazil. Uh, Parana is one of the uh, OECD pilots that, um, that Aziza mentioned in her uh, presentation and is actively involved in the OECD's work on a territorial uh, approach to the SDGs. 
It is, uh, for those who are not familiar, one of the 26 uh, states uh, of Brazil uh, and one of the most uh, populated. Um, Mr. Silva, uh, over to you. You have the floor. Thank you, Robin. Thank you very much for, for the invitation. Uh, I want to, to, greet, to greet everyone and say that uh, it's an honor to participate in, in this event representing the Paraná State. Uh, the only Brazilian state uh, to be part of the OECD uh, program related to the SDGs. Uh, recognizing the, the 2030 agenda as a guide to transform our, uh, our local reality, our first action was, was to assemble a team and define the, the responsibility to implementing the, the agenda in the Economic uh, Social Development Parana State Council. Considering the, the boldness of the agenda, uh, our first action was also the quite, quite daring. Uh, we invited our 399 mayors uh, in cities to sign a term of, of commitment uh, to reach the SDGs. Uh, and we already have 358 cities committed. Uh, we do believe that cities and, and, and states uh, have a crucial role uh, to play in SDG achievement. And furthermore, we are internalizing global indicators. We already have 104 um, uh, cities indicators. Uh, this was possible to the, the important and partnerships we, we have here with the national institutes working in this area. Uh, and the adequacy of the targets and indicators to Paraná will be published this month here in our state in Brazil. We developed the business intelligence tool to show our managers how each city uh, are positioned toward the global plan. And also our state uh, offers public financial uh, research and funds to the regional, urban, and institutional development uh, of the cities. And, and we guide them from, from including 2030 agenda in their master, master plans. Uh, another, another act was, was to invite the body uh, responsible for overseeing the, 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 use, the use of public money uh, here in the state, part of the, this, this strategy. And thus the Paraná Court of Auditors uh, became a good partnership for, for us in, in Paraná. Uh, we are developing also a, a quadruple helix, a sustainable network with the government, private sector, academy, and civil society. Uh, so we have a, we have a plan. Uh, we have a tools, uh, we are part of the important uh, OECD program and we are completely uh, agree with the slogan better, better policy for a better life uh, and we hope to, to keep doing, doing this together. Uh, finally, we, we start in this, in this in year, uh, start of this year 2020, thinking about accelerating, thinking about a decade of, of action but the pandemic came and, and strongly impacted our, our rea reality. We are facing uh, a global crisis, uh, but we need local, we, we really need local responses. And the main challenge now is, is to build uh, answers and for this uncertainly environment. However, this pandemic uh, just reinforced uh, the centrality of, of the sustainable, universal and integrated development agenda that calls for huge, urgent uh, action and the commitment uh, to leave no one behind uh, is more relevant than, than ever. So we are, we are working hard here and we wanted to thank the, this opportunity to, to be with all of our colleagues here. Thank you. Duto, thank you for your presentation and thank you for, for your participation both in our, our work but also in today's side event. I'm just mind blown by this idea of business intelligence tools that guide cities. And I think of your state. I mean, this is, you have 399 municipalities spread over something like 200,000 kilometers. This is, uh, you know, uh, for, for many, the size of a large country or more. I would love to hear more about that. Uh, but I'm going to turn uh, to our next uh, panelist uh, who joins us from uh, Helsinki. Sana Marie Yanti is Director of Strategic Initiatives uh, in the uh, Mayor's Office uh, in the uh, City of Helsinki. Uh, Sana Marie, uh, your Prime Minister spoke uh, just yesterday and I understand that uh, Finland is one of the countries that has uh, 
uh, undergone a, a voluntary national review at this year's the forum. How do you see it from your perspective? Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk about the Helsinki VLR story. Uh, yesterday was obviously a very proud moment for, for Finland, but also some of the cities in, in, in Finland, because it was the first time ever that a national review included um, references to voluntary local reviews of three cities in Finland. So Helsinki's first voluntary local review was done last year, and we were now joined by two other cities in Finland, and the voluntary national review um, actually included many references and texts um, from the voluntary local review. So I think alignment between national reporting and, and local reporting has really achieved um, well in, in Finland. Obviously, there is a lot of work to be done there, but I think it's, it's going the right direction. Um, as you might know, Helsinki became the second city in the world and the first city in Europe to um, commit itself to the voluntary local review model after the city of New York in 2019. And we are so happy now that over 200 cities all over the world uh, are now joined the movement. And, and one of the big advantages of, of us aligning um, our engagement with the voluntary local review is that we are able to find a common language and find a common platform to share the experiences and share the lessons learned from cities. And I'm really inspired to hear all these conversations already today because it always gives you so much food for thought and also inspires you to, to hopefully make a better um, movement yourself and really be more engaged and more ambitious every day. Um, Helsinki's three primary reasons for the voluntary local review engagement and the commitment we made last year are um, to find a language and a final lens that actually provides us an SDG framework um, that aligns our strategy with the Agenda 2030 goals. We have a very ambitious strategy in Helsinki, but because we have for years taken the SDG work almost like for granted, our strategy actually doesn't name the SDGs as one of the frameworks that we work from. So once we realized this, we actually really wanted to find a model that would allow us to, to align and really make transparent all the successes, but also all the you know, failures of our work as far as, uh, as um, Agenda 2030 goes. So this was one of the reasons we did the VLR and it has worked as a tool really, really well. The second reason was that we wanted to find a bridge between us and the citizens. Uh, without local engagement, without people's engagement and understanding and commitment to the work on SDGs, it's very difficult to, to make any of the SDGs ever work and, and really find success universally. I think one of the really hardships of, of the Agenda 2030 success is that people at large still feel fairly distant from the SDGs and don't really find their role um, as far as the UN, the nations, the cities, corporations, NGOs, they just don't find their place in that uh, universe. And I, we, have, we have been working really hard to, to make the language and make the communications and make the framework more approachable for people. And the third was that we really wanted to engage with the international community. Um, I think there is a lot of cities in the world who are able to work with their respective national governments and do really meaningful alignment with the, with the strategies and with the VNRs. Uh, but then there is a whole bunch of cities who want to succeed in Agenda 2030 delivery, but are not able to align or, in fact, maybe get any support from their respective national governments. And these cities are threshold cities. I think we all should, as a community, to support these cities because in those countries, these cities are going to be in the role of making a difference between Agenda 2030 success or failure. So building a global movement was one of the top priorities for us uh, and for the city of New York from the very beginning. And, and we are very proud to see um, all these occasions this year and, and every day new cities moving in, finding their own way, finding their own path towards VLRs and other ways of engaging on subnational level. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Asanari. Well, you're certainly succeeding in building a global movement. Um, you know, really thank you for your leadership and congratulations again on, on yesterday. Great to hear from you, not only from uh, our, our colleagues here in New York who tell us uh, that they're integrating um, the VLR into the VNR, uh, but that you feel this is happening in practice and it's making a difference. Uh, really fantastic news. I'm going to go straight to our next panelist, Stefan Wagner, who is Director of International Affairs uh, of the city of Bonn in Germany. 
Uh, Bonn is uh, another one of the OECD's pilot uh, countries uh, participating in the work on a territorial approach to uh, the SDGs. Uh, Stefan, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. A uh, warm welcome to all of you from Bonn, Germany. Um, one lesson we have learned from the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously, is that we have seen how vulnerable and uh, uh, yeah, our societies are. But we have also seen how important it is to act in a holistic and sustainable way to combine economic, social, and environmental concerns to make our societies more resilient. This holistic approach, to me, is at the very heart of the SDGs. And this is why the city of Bonn is also fully committed itself to the sustainable development goals. Last year, we adopted our first sustainability strategy based on the 17 SDGs, which sets out guidelines for sustainable development up to the year 2030. This strategy seeks to address the main challenges faced by the city in terms of providing sustainable housing, for example, expanding and mainstreaming green spaces, shifting to clean form of transport and energy, and providing employment opportunities, particularly for low-skilled workers. This commitment of the city has accelerated with a council decision on declaring climate emergency last year and also on climate neutrality by 2035. An important part of localizing the SDGs is regular monitoring based on defined indicators. In order to do so, the city of Bonn will publish its first voluntary local review in October this year. We're very glad about to be part of this movement that has just been mentioned. This review will analyze developments in all six fields of action that we particularly committed to. And it's for the first time that we link our strategic goals directly with sustainability indicators and therefore creating a more transparent picture of where we stand and where we want to go to in achieving the SDGs. To further improve on our sustainability management, we have participated with, a fund, uh, with, with funding by, provided by the federal government in the OECD project on a territory, territorial approach to the SDGs. We're very glad to be part of six, one of six pilot cities in this project. The final report on this will be published shortly. The report provides guidance on how the SDGs can help to institutionalize bond sustainability strategy and to allocate adequate resources. It also calls for a shared responsibility across all levels of government in planning, policies, multi-governance, multi-level governance, and finances. In order to do so, I believe we need indicator, indicators which can be used of, at all levels of government so that aggregation of data from different levels is possible. Therefore, it would be better and, and easier for us to clearly show the contribution of cities within the VNR process, within the national um, uh, reporting process. We are convinced that the local voluntary review are an important tool to strengthen the commitment and support the implementation of the 2030 agenda at local level, but also to enhance transparency and to promote public participation. We allow us also help to strengthen vertical integration with other levels of government, namely the regions and the national governments, and to achieve a more concerted action. What we also believe, and which is maybe most important uh, for me, is that the VLR, however, must be always adopted uh, to the local conditions. There is no one-size-fits-all strategy. This is the strength of local action because cities and municipalities are closest to the citizens. I am convinced that the Agenda 2030 is an excellent instrument to address all levels of government and all parts of society for a better, more sustainable future, to leave no one behind. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Stefan. Uh, we're going to go straight, I guess, maybe just across your own city, no, to another speaker who may well be in Bonn, I, I don't know. Um, uh, Ruben Avercan, who is uh, Deputy Head of Division uh, for Water, Urban Development and Mobility uh, at uh, BMZ, the Federal Ministry for Development Cooperation uh, of Germany, uh, to deliver uh, his uh, intervention. Uh, Ruben, you have the floor. Yes, thanks Robin. And um, actually I'm sitting in a city of Cologne, so there are some 30 kilometers between me and... Uh, Not too far. Stefan Wagner. <laughs> Um, not too far, exactly. Yes, let me dive right in. We've already talked a lot about um, why implementing the Agenda 2030 on the local, on the municipal level uh, today. And I think, I don't want to repeat what my uh, colleagues have already said, but I think uh, the, the COVID-19 crisis 
really has uh, made it clear once again how important it is to to live sustainably in all three dimensions economic ecological and uh, and social and has also shown the importance that uh, the municipal level plays in, in both achieving it and uh, upholding it. Um, we are always, in my uh, division, we're always talking about uh, the COVID-19 crisis as a crisis of cities. Uh, it's the densely populated uh, areas that are that were affected first and were affected the hardest. And at the same time, it were uh, local authorities and local administrations that uh, had to react to it and had to be, be up to the task to uh, dealing uh, with this crisis. So um, there we see that local and regional governments are um, essential to secure the provision of um, services in time of crisis, such as uh, the one that we are facing um, right now. Therefore, um, when we're talking about implementation of the SDGs and the municipal level um, and with the gradual increase of um, local and uh, subnational reviews, um, we see that there is a lot of potential for synergies with, uh, with national reviews um, and uh, it can foster the localization of the much needed localization of the Agenda 2030. Um, but in order to successfully uh, implement the Agenda 2030 at the municipal level, we need um, an effective grade of responsibility. We need to uphold the subsidiarity principle um, to implement the Agenda 2030 as, as local as possible uh, in the end, because it's the local authorities, the local administrations that know best uh, what is needed and uh, what is the most efficient way to implement it. So, um, Having said that, uh, we are still in many countries facing uh, the challenge um, to create an enabling institutional environment to implement it and to ensure adequate financial flows to support the localization of uh, the implementation of the Agenda 2030. So let me uh, briefly tell you about a few things that we are at uh, the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development are doing. Um, we have a so-called 2030 implementation initiative uh, with which being said supports partner countries um, in implementing the agenda 2030 in their specific national context and support is given in three systematic areas policies for sustainable development financing the agenda 2030 and of course monitoring and reviewing the the sdgs and many of these projects are supporting the voluntary national reviews which we already talked about a lot today um, as part of this implementation initiative, the 2030 Agenda Transformation Fund uh, acts as a flexible instrument with a focus on a short-term and very small scale uh, project, mainly implemented by um, NGOs. And last, um, the, our ministry together with our minist Federal Ministry for the Environment um, launched back in 2016, the, the Partners for Review, a multi-stakeholder network, which is dedicated to transnational peer learning on follow-up and review of uh, the Agenda 2030. Having that said, these global approaches are complemented by um, specific support um, on the municipal and national level. Um, one of the things that we're doing is a so-called uh, City Works tool set, which um, has helped uh, in implementing and monitoring the Agenda 2030 at city level. One example would be that in Ghana, we have a multi-level monitoring and reporting system for the um, SDG indicators at a district, regional, and national level um, that has been developed within uh, this program. And maybe one last point uh, because I, I stop. Um, we also support cities uh, within Germany with our uh, service agency of local governments um, in one world. Uh, we are providing advisory services and financial support to municipalities and cities in Germany um, and also help them align their local development plans uh, to uh, the SDGs. And it was within this framework that uh, we are happy to have supported uh, the, the review uh, the city of Bonn has uh, conducted that my colleague Stefan Wagner just uh, talked about and are of course uh, very happy to, to be able to support um, one of these pilot uh, initiatives for uh, local reviews of uh, SDG implementation. I think I stop here and uh, maybe we can come back to this later in the Q&A session. Thank you so much, Ruben. 
Uh, it's now my pleasure to invite our last panelist, uh, Paolo Ciccarelli, who is head of unit uh, for cities, local authorities, digitalization, infrastructures. That's, that's quite a lot of things, uh, Paolo. I hope it's a large unit um, at the uh, European Union, uh, DG Devco, uh, to uh, deliver his intervention. But Paolo, you have the floor. And we may need to unmute you. Paolo. Yes, I'm unmuting. I'm yes. So thank you, Robin, and thank you also to the uh, Mission of Germany uh, for the invitation. Uh, just to say that, uh, in fact, we are covering a lot of topics in our unit, but unfortunately, it's not big enough, I would say. So we have, we have uh, the problem of working too much, I think. But anyway, let me say that, uh, as you can imagine, the European Commission is. Um, as a big organization with a big budget, we are doing support in many countries uh, at national level, at a regional and local level especially. And I would like to use the short uh, time that uh, uh, is allocated to us to concentrate especially on one program that we, um, we launched recently that is basically a, a program financed for a partnership uh, between uh, cities in the EU and in the uh, partner countries. And we have been doing this in two phases. We've launched the first phases uh, in 2018. And we already signed uh, some uh, 16 contracts, uh, including also big cities like uh, uh, in the EU, Barcelona, Madrid, uh, Berlin, uh, Paris, uh, Milan. And in the uh, partner countries, we have uh, Jakarta, San Jose, we have uh, Dakar, uh, uh, Kampala, and others. So, uh, and then we are now in the phase of uh, evaluating the second uh, call in which we are uh, hopefully signing uh, about another uh, 30 contracts. So at the end, we will have uh, around 45, 50 contracts to make this a big, uh, let's say, um, uh, partnership programs in which uh, we will leave very um, free the different municipalities to choose uh, where they are going to work. So we gave the, the possibility to work in the three pillars of uh, the economic, uh, environmental and social dimension, of course, working on governance. And of course, uh, one of the main issues that came out immediately is how to monitor and how to capture uh, uh, the output of all this work in different uh, thematic areas and in different, uh, let's say, strands of work. So um, you can imagine that uh, the challenge uh, that represents monitoring the implementation of the SDGs in all these uh, partnerships. Um, in, in particular, uh, we need to have uh, accurate data we need to compare uh, indicators adapted to the local level and of course based on the agenda 2030 and also uh, the, the need to compare among data in the same area of intervention that is why and uh, and um, here maybe i would like to 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 stress that we are uh, uh, decide to do part of this work together with the colleagues from OECD, in particular with Aziza and Stefano Marta. And basically, um, based on the different works that we are doing on territorial approach for the SDGs, to, the de to develop a, 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 an homogeneous evaluation framework to measure the contribution of each of these uh, around 40 partnership to the achievement of the SDGs with a strong focus, of course, on the SDG 11 and the SDGs 17, the, the, the SDGs for the partnerships. So basically, uh, this work uh, will support the SDG monitoring at local level and uh, will contribute to the adoption of the SDG localization by the concerned municipalities. And they could represent, in my opinion, uh, a good basis to help uh, the local authorities that are involved in this program in the reporting of, of their voluntary local reviews. Because we are talking about establishing really a methodology, 
and this methodology could uh, could uh, let's say help a lot of these uh, local authorities um, just to say that this program altogether is about 160 million so you can understand that this uh, we have a quite uh, substantial uh, work to to be done in the next uh, three four five years uh, also i would like to say oh, no, that, okay. Can I ask you to wrap up? I'm just conscious that the participants would like to ask questions. Thank you so much. Okay, so I will wrap up immediately, saying that for us is uh, important uh, the inclusion of these uh, uh, local reviews in the elaboration, uh, implementation, and monitoring of policy and national level, in order to facilitate the inclusion of uh, the the national voluntary review, the the local review in the national voluntary review. Thank you, I, I close here. Thank you so much, Paolo. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for the EU's partnership. And my apologies to, 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 to press you on time there. I, I want to open the floor right away to um, uh, questions. I see a small number of hands up already. Uh, my colleague Adam will bring them uh, onto the screen um, uh, so that they can ask their uh, questions. Um, and I think the first a hand to go up was Ambassador Tassos Kriakoukis, who is the um, a diplomatic advisor of the uh, mayor of uh, Athens uh, in Greece. I wonder if we could get him up on a screen. Might take just one moment. Um, Ambassador, do you see us or hear us? No, uh, we'll come back to him. Uh, hopefully we'll have him on uh, in a moment. Uh, is uh, Guido uh, Krilchuk uh, of the uh, permanent mission of uh, Argentina here in New York uh, uh, there? Can we hear him or see him? Yes. I'm here. Good to go you. ahead. Great to have you with us. Thank you, moderator, and thank you, all Germany and OECD, for organizing this event. Just to be brief, I'd like to comment on the work of OECD in Argentina, in the province of Cordoba, in localizing the SDGs. That work started in 2016, was always with the promotion of uh, data production that evolved into measuring the sustainable development goals. And in 2018, uh, Cordoba began the process of ter territorializing the SDGs with partnership of OECD. And that involved the private sector and civil society that is always very important for us. And they were included in our first BNR in 2016. And now with OECD, the province is working on establishing intersectoral participation alliances to have a clear prioritization of goals and uh, adaptation of the SDGs to the local reality and have a strong uh, implementation adapted. So I will be brief just to say that and say that you can see the BNR of Argentina this year some that we presented on Monday has a whole section on localization of the SDGs and following the example of New York and Helsinki, Buenos Aires submitted the local review last year. So just to comment that, thank you moderator. Guido, thanks so much. Thanks for joining and congratulations on your, your VNR. Uh, I want to go uh, straight to uh, Ambassador uh, Mlinar of uh, the Slovak Republic, uh, if he can see and hear us. Uh, and then afterwards, we will try uh, to go back to, the, uh, uh, to Ambassador uh, Kriakoukis in uh, Athens. Uh, Ambassador Mlinar, you have the floor. Thanks very much, uh, Robin. I, I hope you can uh, hear me. Uh, greetings to colleagues from uh, the Spanish-German missions and to your OECD team. Uh, very quickly, uh, very interesting and, uh, and extremely relevant. Uh, thank you very much for doing that. I'm proud to announce that uh, Bratislava has also all just uh, signed the, the, the declaration and uh, uh, has started working for the, for the first time uh, with uh, the new mayor on the uh, on the VLR, which is exciting for us. So uh, we will have some further uh, good um, uh, correlations and coordination to do. 
Um, I have been on record many times before that uh, I believe SDG 11 is the most cross-cutting one, uh, and I hope you will agree with me there, uh, that indeed uh, if we cannot do SDG 11 properly, uh, then it puts a big question mark to so many other uh, issues. Uh, uh, related uh, to it um, and the local level is critical. My um, uh, question, main question really is um, uh, given the, the fact that uh, uh, even the um, statistics uh, uh, shows that local and regional governments uh, uh, had not been uh, di uh, directly consulted uh, in about 50% of the times uh, uh, about uh, uh, the uh, VNRs in preparations for VNRs. The question is, uh, what can we do better, uh, or you know, where you guys may need uh, further uh, support from us here uh, on the diplomatic level uh, in New York, uh, in order to make it uh, uh, better to increase uh, uh, this uh, figure of 50%. Uh, and also, we have the decade of action, uh, and if we want to uh, make uh, sufficient progress on SDG 11 as well. Uh, we need to improve. So where do you see the particular areas and uh, the particular uh, support that you might uh, need from us uh, further than uh, so far? Thank you, Robin. Thank you, uh, Michal. And I hope that we will have time to uh, get an answer to that question. What, what more can we do to uh, support a localization of the, um, of the um, SDGs? Let's see if if Ambassador uh, Kriya Kukis uh, can uh, speak from uh, Athens now. Well, we do... hear you, we hear you. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's something. Maybe it's better not to see me. <laughs> well, two things. First of all, uh, thank you so much for having the opportunity to belong to the family and the regards uh, for, on behalf of the mayor and the best wishes for the German presidency. Well, as we talked about COVID-19, uh, in Athens, we saw it uh, as an enormous challenge, but also an opportunity because, uh, unfortunately, it's largely accepted that there won't be a back to normal, but there is a way uh, to build back better. And I think that uh, we seized uh, this uh, opportunity in Athens exactly for the fulfillment of the goals. First of all, <clears throat> we, as the streets were empty, uh, of course, we cleaned up everything, we disinfected everything. And also, uh, what we did is uh, that we resurfaced and we continue to resurface in uh, the streets by using cool materials, uh, uh, which uh, really uh, help uh, to prevent heat retention. And uh, also, uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis gave us the opportunity of digitalizing the municipality. So it's more than 200 certificates now that can be really obtained uh, digitally, and also uh, human shelters and uh, hotlines for for uh, for women at risk of domestic violence, or uh, uh, exactly help. Let's say increasing services for drug addicts, but also what we did because I think uh, the, in order to achieve growth, uh, it's to achieve to have a friendlier city. And uh, that's why now uh, the, we are implementing uh, a very, very important urban mobility plan, uh, which is called the Great Walk. That means seven kilometers of green corridors in the mid of the city, unifying uh, the, uh, uh, all the archaeological sites, so less cars, more uh, bicycles, more really people walking in the city. And I think that this is something that can attract investment, attract really tourism, and uh, uh, also helps us, especially by, because it has been mentioned 
uh, to really upgrade our green areas, not only remove graffiti, but upgrade the green areas. And this is a huge plan with which we try to achieve the goals. And I think that uh, putting an end to this intervention, uh, in order to attract uh, talent, investment, and of course, tourism, uh, how can we compete? And that's very important, is by identifying existing strengths. I think we need collaboration. Uh, and uh, uh, we have to utilize the best practices in order to achieve the goals by sharing these best practices. Uh, because uh, we have uh, to improve all of us accessibility, sustainability, and economic resilience. And I think by exchanging ideas, exchanging practices, we can better achieve our common goals. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador, for this rich description of the situation which you're managing uh, and, and, you know, really uh, um, for sharing with us uh, some of the very concrete challenges, but also some of the concrete solutions uh, that you're implementing uh, there. Uh, we've run out of time. I've done a terrible job of moderating. I'm conscious that there are still uh, hands up and that we won't be able to answer everyone's questions. Uh, I'm going to put a couple of people on the spot for a final 30 seconds, and if they don't have an answer, we'll uh, move to someone else and we'll wrap up. Uh, when you sign out of this meeting, uh, those of you accessing uh, via a PC or a Mac will see uh, our webpage on a territorial uh, approach to the SDGs pop up, and there are contact details there uh, for those of you who want to grill uh, Aziza and uh, Stefano further, or who simply want to read more about our work. Uh, one question really struck me, uh, and that was uh, Ambassador Minar of Slovakia's question. Uh, we sit here in these very important meetings in New York, um, but we want to know what else we can do uh, here in this bubble uh, to support implementation on the ground. And I wonder if I might put uh, Sana Marie on the spot, uh, because you did it just yesterday. What more can New York do for you? Uh, what more can New York do for uh, cities and regions? I would say shortly two things. It's very important that the role of cities, subnational governments, and the voluntary local reviews are talked about. In every table where SDG success, SDG implementation is talked about, they should always take into consideration the role of cities, you know, regions, uh, rural areas. Um, we need more talk on the high level, highest level and the high level of the whole ecosystem, not just the national level. And I think the UN is slowly but surely moving towards to that end. And I think it's gonna be a beneficial uh, path to all of us, not just the cities, but also the nations, because that's the road to success. Another thing I wanna say, which is very practical, is that we are a very thresh low threshold network. There is no formal secretariat anywhere. There is no office of the BLR. It's just a very low threshold, practical city-led movement. And I think bringing cities together is essential. Every city who is trying to do a VLR benefits from being in contact with other cities. So just bringing on the diplomatic level, bringing the knowledge and bringing the cities together and putting people into contact with each other is what you do best. And that's really helpful to us. Thank you uh, so much, Sanri. We have uh, we had over 160 uh, colleagues uh, following today, many of them based in the permanent missions here in New York. Uh, so I count on them to take those uh, messages away. Aziza Akmush, a um, couple of colleagues asked very important questions in the chat box, which we did not get a chance to answer. I'm not going to ask you to answer all of them. How can we use your work and apply it in a developing country environment? Uh, we had a colleague from Nairobi uh, ask. Uh, and second, what can we do to put uh, uh, you know, big data out there uh, together so that we can uh, better track uh, implementation at the subnational level? 
Thank you, Robin. And uh, the, the response to the first question is easy. The work we are going to start now with Paolo's uh, team on city to city partnership and uh, the evaluation of, uh, of partnerships between uh, EU cities and, and cities in, in the developing world will help us push a bit this statistical frontier and produce data for the global south, which we don't have now because in the uh, measuring distance tool that I mentioned earlier, the 600 cities and 600 regions are OECD and emerging economies. And on the second track, I think uh, what is really important now is that these trends of producing subnational statistics through local voluntary reviews and the long-standing efforts to produce national statistics through national voluntary reviews coincide somehow and that national statistical offices work with their uh, peers, counterparts at local level to make sure that in both reporting mechanisms we are reflecting uh, the performance at subnational and national level. So it's not only policymakers that need to coordinate mayors with ministries, it's also statisticians across levels of government that uh, really need to uh, make sure their efforts are mutually uh, reinforcing and complementary to have a real picture of how a country is performing with these uh, granular data. Aziza, thank you so much. Um, Ambassador Santos, can I put you on the spot? Uh, when Spain hosted uh, the Seville gathering just over a year ago, you had never imagined uh, that a pandemic would, uh, would, uh, would ravage the world uh, and create uh, these risks and these, this, this really unparalleled uh, challenge to uh, implementing the SDGs. Do you have any final thoughts? Yes. The stress that the COVID-19 has produced in the finance of local and regional governments has been enormous. Now, in the case of Spain, at least one third of all new credits that local and regional governments ask in the markets goes to pay all debts and try to refinance. We are going to face a very serious problem that we have added to the 2008 Great Recession, now the COVID-19 recession. And the pressure on public, um, public expenditure, social expenditure that is basically linked to local and regional governments has become enormous. We have to put a focus on the financial stability in the middle and long term of local and regional governments. They are an essential part of a democratic state. They are an essential provider of the welfare goods. And we need to assure the financial resources at this level of the state. Ambassador, thank you so much. Uh, I don't think anyone could have summarized the challenge, um, but also the action needs, that needs to be taken going forward um, uh, any more succinctly. So, so really thank you and thank you again for your leadership and thank you for being with us uh, today. We've run out of time, we've gone slightly over time, so it remains for me uh, on behalf of the two co-hosts uh, of this event uh, Karen, I think we'd agreed no closing remarks, uh, but simply to say on behalf of both the OECD and Germany, uh, a big thank you to all of our panelists, a big thank you to all of you who joined us uh, during this lunchtime or during this uh, evening, uh, during a very a busy high level uh, political forum. Uh, a big thanks to my colleagues, uh, to Aziza and her team uh, in Paris. And thank you also to Adam Kegley, my office manager, who has been keeping the, the virtual wheels running in the ether and has managed uh, very capably to stitch us all together uh, for today's uh, meeting. So again, thank you. Uh, good luck with what's left of the HLPF uh, and have a very good afternoon or evening wherever in the world you are. Goodbye. And thank you, Robin, for the excellent moderation. Thank you, Robin, for all the efforts. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you.